everyone welcome back to my channel it's me Anya and in this video I'm going to show you how I painted Princess Serenity from the anime Sailor Moon I used to watch Sailor Moon when I was a little girl to be honest and don't hate me for this I don't remember much about what the anime was about other than they transform in these iconic Sailor Scout uniforms and defeat monsters with sparkle lightnings I thought it was awesome but it was such a long time ago, and I was too young to fully understand what was completely going on. I did, however, collect massive amounts of stickers and merch back then. I still have some of them, which are now totally vintage. They were one of the reasons why I began drawing anime. I spent about two nights practicing on how to draw this character. One of my weakness is drawing characters looking up, so I thought it would be a good idea to practice on that. With all the practice, observing references, and drafting the line art, it took me about three days to finish the final outline. I scanned it before painting in case I make a mistake since I have been switching mediums a lot. I have mostly taught acrylic painting at work and recently I've taken an interest in oil painting so going back to watercolor and gouache takes a bit of an adjustment. Honestly, I didn't think this artwork would be successful at all. I wasn't as confident with watercolor as I used to be since I don't paint with it as often. But I didn't care. Sometimes. When I'm unsure about a medium, I would prefer to paint and fail than not paint at all. How else will I learn? For this painting, I'm still doing the use your hoarded art materials before you buy more challenge. Which I need to rename by the way. So for the gouache, I'm still using my Cymbalion and Weave set. And for my watercolor, I'm using Sennelier. My paper is the student grade Canson watercolor paper since I hoarded a lot of them and I forgot why I needed so much. Normally, I start painting the skin with a cool underpainting before layering a warm skin tone over it. But for this kind of illustration, I would skip that part. Although if her features were more realistic, I would definitely start with an underpainting. Lately, and I have no idea why, painting the nose has been challenging for me. It's probably because I stopped painting faces for a year or more, and somehow I need to relearn how to paint noses. Or maybe I don't really pay attention to noses as much as I thought, since I usually focus on the eyes. But I will work on that because practice makes progress. Whenever I create a concept for a painting, I make a point to decide on the palette I will use beforehand instead of going at it without a plan. Selecting a palette helps with the aesthetics of a painting. When I learned that, I started with only three colors that complemented each other. After I got used to the limited palette, I began adding more colors. Right now, I use about five to six colors. But starting with less is best if you're not yet confident using a limited palette. I decided to use gouache with watercolor since I really like the vibrancy of my gouache sets. And I didn't have enough bright colors in my watercolor palette. For the skin, I used the flesh gouache color and layered a thin wash of it for the first layer. I then mix red and yellow watercolors and added just a little bit of teal for the darker layers. If you don't have teal, you can use a lighter shade of blue. Just don't use white to make blue lighter. Use water instead to thin the paint.
Since her hair is really light, I mostly focused on her roots and the tips of her bangs. I only added a few strands for the rest of her hair because adding too much would make it darker. If you're using a reference, you would need to figure out where the light source is. But if you're painting from imagination, you have to decide where to put your light source. The placement of shadows, including darker hair strands, should be consistent with your light source. I decided to paint the background for this artwork. I only added a few embellishments and painted the negative space to create more definition for the character and the accents. Since she has light hair, painting the negative space would create a contrast that would make her hair more noticeable. I usually finish pieces like these in about 3 days since I really prefer to take my time with all my paintings, but since I wanted to share my process, I decided to finish it in one go. Waiting for the layers to dry takes time, and I have to admit, after finishing it, I know it still needs more work and I might have to keep working on it after this recording. I use a lot of floral decorations for my portraits. One of the reasons why I do this so often is because I'm very impatient with floral painting. It's one of those subjects that I like to rush into so I don't study them much. But I figured if I keep painting them, I would somehow remember bits and pieces of its structure through continuous observation from references. So I didn't realize my camera stand moved in this part, so you won't see much of how I painted the hand. But luckily I noticed right away and adjusted it later on. <laughs> For this last part, instead of trying to paint gold directly on the accents on her dress and the moon on her forehead, I decided to put a light yellow wash on it first to create more dimension. I 
I finished this painting by adding gold watercolor over the yellow parts and also on the dragonflies. So that's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up or leave your question in the comment section below. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to receive notifications. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!